Hi guys, welcome back to Aligning with Success. And um, as always, I'm your host, Mike Mucho. So um, where do we start? Well, I just want to maybe recap a little bit of last week's call because it was sort of the nuts and bolts of conveying, communicating a system. And then we'll just go to some Q&A and maybe take up some, some stuff that's going on relevant right now in your business. But if you recall, what we talked a lot about was the idea of a business in this business for it to thrive and do well, the network marketing business I'm talking about here, as pointed out in the four-year career book by Richard Bliss Brook, you need a system of duplication. If there's no duplication, there's no um, non-linear growth. If you don't have exponential growth or non-linear growth, then you don't have more people joining your business on a monthly basis, outnumbering uh, people who may be dormant or or become uh, passive. So uh, in order for that to happen, you need a system, a system that creates replication. And it's gotta be simple, easy for people to see it, understand it, get involved in it, from the very moment they're lear they're learning about Nikan. So the actual way you're you're introducing them to Nikan is part of that duplicatable system. If you're doing something out of the ordinary and it's rather complicated and you have to have a super high level of skill to do it, then that's not something you can teach somebody very easily. And therefore that wouldn't count as duplicatable or duplicatable at the level that it needs to be for the kind of exponential growth and scale that we're talking about. Um, yeah, there are other levels of duplication. Like if you were a gold distributor and you were you were um, using, I don't know, a, some type of a, an AI or some type of advertising through social media or whatever, that's something you've developed as a, you know, a rather skilled Niken consultant. That's something you can teach other people maybe when they get to gold themselves and they've matured in the business to a point where that information now would be useful to them, but it wouldn't be useful to somebody who's brand new getting started and is being told, this is what you need to do if you want to succeed. They just, they won't, you, you won't get a lot of people joining your team. So duplication is about, can we make it so simple that it's fun? It's simple. It's easy to understand. It's easy to get involved with. Um, and if that's the case, then a person will increase the probability of that person actually getting involved. And if you can demonstrate to that person that the very thing that we just said, that it's easy, fun, uh, easy to get involved, uh, produces some result, quick results. If we can show somebody that that leads to an organization that can generate uh, a lot more revenue, scalable revenue. In other words, if the prototype, if the, what do they call it in, uh, if the proof of concept in the franchise industry, if it's the franchise works, then having many franchises would also work. So the idea is what can we create that simple, easy, easy to follow, easy to duplicate that others can do the same. They can join and therefore the likelihood of you experiencing income distributors on more than your first level, second, third. You know where the big money is in network marketing? Any idea? Where is the big, yeah, Leo, where's the big money? Fourth level. <laughs> Four, five, and six. The big money is the fourth, fifth, and sixth levels. So if you don't have an organization four, five, and six generations deep, you're missing out on the big money. So how do we get to the fourth, fifth, and sixth generation? How can we make something so easy that the chances of you having grandchildren who have grandchildren who have grandchildren increases really, really highly? And the answer is a simple, duplicatable, easy to follow system. And then to prove to everybody that you have that, you got to demonstrate it. You got to show it. Proof of concept. Um, some of you probably have seen now, by now, uh, Let's see, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, this is something that Leo had made. Pretty cool, huh? Love it. The graphic is really great. And it it's really about 
proof of concept. So he's he's locked into an idea that if I recognize somebody who would, who does 500 points in any time of the month they do it, then, and by the way, it doesn't have to be the, only, the, the first time. I mean, we always recognize somebody who just went senior, right? We just, we recognize, oh, I got somebody who just went senior. They get recognition. But what if they do 500 points next month and 500 points the month after that and 500 points after that? Well, this is to capture that. The idea is to create an awareness, a protocol that locks in the idea of 500 points PV per month, which is our franchise model, which turns into very sizable income as it gets multiplied. So we have to have proof of concept, which means we have to prove it works. And you do that by recognizing what you want to multiply. You recognize what you want to multiply, and that's your proof of concept. So the idea is to recognize achievement as it happens in real time, every time it happens. So now, instead of a person getting recognized once, they're going to get recognized every time they make that happen. And um, and so you might have, that might be the starting 500 club. Maybe the next one will be 1500 club. Talking about that already. Um, why? Well, how many of you know what it takes to qualify as a silver? What's the volume required to vault, qualify as a silver? You're your 6%. It's 1,500 points. Yeah. So uh, you're not your 6 Yeah, Well, yeah, you're 6%, your leadership bonus. So 1,500 points is the next benchmark for qualification. So when we recognize that, then, then people can start to get that into their consciousness. Okay. So we talked about that last week. Then we talked about a simple methodology for getting somebody started in this simple process of duplication is this the idea of hosting a pink day party right and and then we looked at okay well if, you know if you're going to host a pink day party then you want to have some things on hand that again make it simple duplicatable one of the things i really encourage if you're going to have a pink day party for somebody coming up or if they just jo joined be sure that they have their get their gift bags or their loot bags or whatever, uh, and they have their their collagen brochure. Now, the ones that I would recommend you get from Life and Balance Tools. Net, they will have they will replace this code with a QR code, which is what a QR code looks like. Um, if you submit in the in when you purchase it, if you submit the URL for the person who you're launching um, that links directly to their personal page for this product, for the, for the collagen. You can choose the collagen, the page, or you can choose the 90 day pack, whatever. So that when somebody's at your party, you can say, okay, everybody pull this out. Now here's your call to action. Now take your phone and scan that QR code. Did it open up for you? Did it open up for you? How about you? You got it? Okay, great. What do you see? Okay, perfect. You can go ahead and place your order right now. In other words, the easier you make it, the simpler you make it by doing a little bit of, of the preparation, like having those brochures with QR codes on hand, then you're making it simple for people to see how easy it is to do. And then the chances of you having somebody want to have their own pink party because it's so simple. It was fun. It produced a result, a rank advancement to senior, the 500 PV. And now you have a, a replicatable system for getting somebody started in Niken and generating the network. Now the network can start to take root. You can start to get generational growth. And as you start to get generational growth, now we're talking, now we're talking network marketing. And so, of course, what comes up in the back of that is all of the Nikan products over time that they'll be exposed to, and and then they will be building their Nikan wellness home. Um, we're going to maybe probably look at orienting some of our uh, presentations during the week so that uh, people are getting exposed to not just the business opportunity, but maybe a product category every week. Um, I know that that's something that Dr. Linder was doing, and I think it's something that's a good thing to do. If we get a product category exposed uh, every week, 
then new consultants who join the business can be led to that call so they can learn more about the Nikon product line. It's like a commercial. It's like having a live commercial, only this commercial comes equipped with testimonials. And there's nothing more powerful than a testimonial. So imagine you have somebody who's new, maybe they just joined because of the pink collagen party they had, you had with them. And, and now they want to plug into the Niken, um, the train, the highway, the, the, the information pipeline. And that pipeline has a category night. Maybe that's what we call it. Hey, category night. Why don't you learn one of the categories in the Niken product line? And they can join category night. And all of a sudden now you're getting them informed. They're getting themselves informed, complete with presentation and testimonials uh, of the different products in the category. And now you're building their awareness. They're building their awareness of the products and they will become customers of those products. Fortifying our business model, which is a wellness home has a beginning and no end. It, it's it's ongoing. And so now what you have is a business a model that's duplicatable that produces an ongoing stream of revenue. And you've 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 got everything you need to make a network marketing business thrive. So now it's a matter of how do I communicate this? So we're going to have to have a presentation that communicates the business of the business. Now I have been I've I've uh, done these presentations in the past sort of haphazardly um, now and then. And I even had set aside some time on a Saturday. But before I commit to any time um, or any more time out of my schedule, I want you to think about this and maybe send me a text or maybe we can even talk about it right now. But if I was going to do a presentation myself um, where that presentation was going to be the business of the business, where people get to actually hear what I just said um, in a way that presents the whole concept of the Niken business, how it is scalable and, and how we get support and how it's transformational and how people can participate and how they can build, they can begin to build an MSI, a business that can generate prosperity for them and abundance for them in a simple, easy to follow strategy. So if I was going to do such a presentation, which is typically a training, when would be the best day to have such a training? Would it be a Saturday morning or would it be a Thursday evening or what? Does anybody have any thoughts about that? Paul, you're on mute. So we have entrepreneurs being more on Thursday. Yeah. Um, so I think Saturday morning would be better uh, because it kind of fits with, okay, one Saturday it's Seiko Kai. Uh, so another Saturday could be, could be this. It, it, presumably somebody coming to this, it wouldn't be their first presentation. You know, they'd be subjected to, or presented with a process that they go through. So somebody could be here tonight for example if they wanted but but this would be a kind of a category saturday a.m okay now th there's one thing that i just thought about as i was saying this uh, as you were speaking actually um the advantage of having a category night where they learn about the products different than watching a video is what what's the advantage of coming to a live meeting they can ask questions. What else? Uh, they can hear from other people besides one person with their testimonials. Okay. So and they can bring people to that kind of category. So okay. So yes, yeah, an opportunity to invite people as well. But keep in mind if it's going to be mostly directed towards product knowledge, product awareness, it's interactive, other people are involved um testimonials that's what really makes the live event a live event otherwise th the information itself can be packaged like we've got some great presentations already of you know air matters water matters sleep matters um 
so the advantage of a live meeting is the interactive part of it, the testimonials part of it. That's what makes it functional, live. Um, with respect to this type of a meeting, again, what I like about your comment is it's it, it would only be useful if it was interactive. Because I could easily record a presentation, me doing this presentation, and make it available to everybody and say, hey, you got people asking the right questions. This is the one, the next presentation for them. And then what would be the point of doing a live if they could just... So unless there's an opportunity for interaction or even a need, um, it's kind of pointless. So... Which way would you guys lean? And, I, and before I, I before you answer, that presentation tends to have a lot of information. I find when I finish that presentation, people don't have questions. <laughs> they're they're so overloaded with information, they don't even know what questions to ask. So it it might be um, a different call altogether, where maybe the video has been shared with them, but then the call is really the interactive part. Meaning, let's you got questions, bring your questions. Want to learn about the comp plan, specifics, things like that. Bring your questions to this call. So what would that call be? Well, it, it could still be on Saturday morning. My I tend okay. to proceed this way that I people have an opportunity to uh, to listen to uh the um the uh, rec the recordings on, on different things, whether it's product or business, and I use the latency with which they take to listen to these things as again a sorting mechanism, so that uh, once they come to a Saturday event like this, we presume that they've they've heard some or viewed some presentations already, and they're coming with their questions. That's the way I would see it. Okay. That's cool. I'm just thinking about a, a snazzy title for it. How about Saturday AM Live? We got That's Saturday Vance's. Night Live. Saturday Night Live. We got Saturday AM Live. <laughs> well, Vance has that too, right? At He's got Saturday AM. Yeah, he does have a Saturday AM. Yeah. So, and his is different, you know. Than... Yeah. But you know, this one be this. With the purpose of this call is is not like this call tonight. The purpose of this call is to move consultants, new consultants, into the next area. You know, we, we've we've got to keep them moving along. And in terms of their uploading and understanding of how to implement what they're learning. So this is more of a, maybe it's a strategy call. I don't know. Um, the idea here, though, is to create a space for interaction with new consultants. Notice we don't have them on the call. That's on this call doesn't tend to attract new consultants. It it tends to attract people who've been in the business a while. So this call is more of a mentoring call, which is which is really what I positioned it as. Um so but I'm thinking more and more that as we start to move in the direction that we are with replication, duplication, we need a way to move people onto a launch platform, onto a launch pad, where they have a better understanding of the business itself. And, uh, and, and you can leverage um, my, my experience or whatever, whoever else wants to take on the role of conducting that presentation. Like right now, what we have is we have the, um, the Tuesday night call is now being duplicated. Have you noticed that? We now have different presenters presenting that. The reason is because they're following a script. They're following a PowerPoint. So they're able to interject their personality, uh, feature certain testimonials, but essentially they're following a script, AKA a wellness preview. So similarly, we need um, a business presentation where the conversation is more about what I just talked about, the the big picture, the way that a person can actually start generating an income that's in line with what they're really after. Something that shows the principles behind how money works in our business. Well, I think, Mike, about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, you had said you 
we're wanting this Monday call to to be for uh, new people, new consultants, but uh, uh, we kind of fell into our usual pattern. So uh, if if we did have something on the Saturday, you know, this is really for new consultants, you know, then it would be very clear. How many of you would um? How many of you would benefit from that right now? I mean, obviously, if you've got new consultants, that would be a yes. If you don't, then I'd be sitting there twiddling my thumbs on a Saturday morning. So um, I, I do want to get in, go in this direction, and I'm not sure how to initiate it. That's why I'm asking. Well, I would benefit, but I'll stop talking. <laughs> That's all right. Anybody? Nancy, you're you're not sure. It would be wonderful, but I don't have any new one, any okay. consultants. So sounds great. Okay. So maybe I'm a little pre premature on this. Uh, Jeannie, I, I I have I have Sharon, which was in October when she joined at the end of the month. Um, and she has, she, she is wanting to do, she's like, okay, I'm getting ready to, you know, all these kind of things. And we talked about silver and, you know, she was kind of like, she got a little overwhelmed with the team, the team thing, but, but it excited her cause she likes systems. Remember you guys connected on systems. Yeah. And so, um, I th I would I think she would really benefit from that. She has great questions too. So uh, and I would love to be there with her on that <laughs> too. So I'm learning as well. She had a question today about you know the air machine and we called Barbara Batucci cuz she just met her at Humans Being More in Georgia and so we had a great conversation and she got an answer that really helped her and she put her plugged in the new new customer and that kind of thing so um she she actually set up a meeting with Luis and the team because she has questions about the the uh website and she feels this needs to be done this needs to be done and he goes Luis said okay well, let me get my team together so that's going to happen sometime in the next week or two so i think that would help her a lot too Okay. To have a training uh, well, listen, of some sort. If you have, it, does it need to be something scheduled regularly, or do you do I just need to make myself available for an ABC? I mean, typically, what happens is I'll I'll put it out there, but then it ends up being an ABC. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, I so let me put that out there right now for all of you and anyone uh -huh. listening to this playback. I am available for ABCs. Um, my favorite ABC calls are calls when people uh, want to know about the intricacies of the business or the nuances or, you know, they have business questions or they want to have a better understanding of how, um, how is this worth their time investment? This is the big question that I'm trying to answer in this, in this conversation, in this, in this presentation is how is it worth my time investment? And remember, the relationship most people have with time is linear. They put X time in, they get X dollars out, and that doesn't change. It's a linear relationship. What we're trying to show them is a nonlinear relationship is far more valuable, where it may not seem like much at first, but when you introduce compounding, the eighth wonder of the world, according to Einstein, Einstein compounding allows or a nonlinear relationship between time and money. And that is your ticket out of the rat race. So um, we want to really, I, I want to really have an opportunity for you guys to put people in front of me. Because I know if, if you had the confidence to bring people in front of me and you knew that this was what I was going to be talking about, then um, you know, the people that you're going to put in front of me, it's kind of like the, the idea of the field of dreams. You know, if you build it, they will come right now. What we want to do is start 
attracting entrepreneurs. And so if we create the space for it, then, you know, maybe they'll come. Mm -hmm. Nancy? I'm thinking uh, right now, because like you said, it ends up being an ABC when you're there Saturdays, that you would just need to look at it as this is when Mike is available. He might not be, but good grief, call ahead, make a plan. And then when you get overwhelmed and say, wait a minute, I have eight people here with all these questions. We need to have a time, you know? So I'm thinking just as the steps, it is ABCs, Saturday, such and such a time, let me know. And if you don't hear from anybody, Yahoo, go to the beach, you know. <laughs> Saturday ABCs, okay. Um, I got Saturday Q&A, Saturday ABC, stat Saturday Strategy. I'll, I'll, I'll sort, I'll keep playing with this, but this is this is good. Um and it doesn't have to be a Saturday. Again, that was Paul's suggestion. If you guys think a week night is better, I know Paul, you mentioned entrepreneurs um, being uh, more. Being more is is now at the eight o'clock. That was the time slot that I had left um, that I had allocated. And then Jeff and I talked, and I said, "You can. I'll give that up because we're not using it right now." Um, but who is the entrepreneurs being more targeted at? Who is who is that? audience for consultants yes. consultants at what level any level so someone brand right, spanking Jenny? you are i they don't getting, really know no. mm -mm. i don't know are they getting in other words is it is it just a pat on the back call or is it a strategy call uh, well i i think more the former uh yeah, it's Jeff's, a pat of the back, I guess, you know. Well, it's going over, let's say, I think what Jeff has done, and I wasn't on last week, but uh, it's uh, going over the promotions, all of that. What are y'all doing? Do you have any questions? The Isn't incentives. that basically it? Yeah, okay, the incentives. It's, it's a support yeah. call. It's a support yeah. call, but it's not a getting started call. It's not a... Yeah. So, no. uh, so I'm trying to address that audience. I'm trying to address the okay. audience of you've got somebody who's not quite yet on the starting blocks and they're sort of circling around the idea of this as a business, but they haven't, you haven't landed that because you you just haven't, you haven't given, you don't have an, maybe you're a little shy to go in and have that conversation. But if you, if you knew you had somebody standing by to have that conversation, you might be open to say, hey, you know what? Maybe this is a call. Uh, maybe we should ask, get you on this call and ask some questions. Yeah. Dean? I, I just Googled, like, you know, words for a new team. And what came up that I liked was up and coming team um, or, or, you know, up and coming team questions or up and coming team ABCs. I mean, and up and coming could be very new, maybe people just looking at it, and maybe people who've been around for a while but want to reactivate in a deeper way as well. Okay. I What I used to call this meeting was a strategy and orientation session. It used to be called the SOS meeting. Mm. That's good. I like that. I that like, sounds the like somebody's in trouble, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they that's are true. Shit. <laughs> I like the idea of having a recording that people can refer back to that outlines the strategy and, and lays it out, but also then having the the chance for personal interaction and people might listen to the strategy first or if they're kind of shy about it, meeting you first and then having that strategy recording as a kind of review and effectively a crib sheet. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, definitely I'm going to record this thing for sure. Uh, there's only one thing I'm going to now integrate since we're doing pink days, I'm going to start to integrate pink day and put the pink day elements into this PowerPoint so that 
it says, here's a great way to start. Um, a few months back, well, actually before the start of the year, last year, we had the, um, I can't remember what we, call, what we called it, um, with the waterfall. What was that program? Um, oh, house, something with house in it, I think. It, well, powerhouse. The oh, powerhouse, yeah. right. So yeah. the idea of the powerhouse was it was specifically a launch strategy. So if you just had a powerhouse training, a powerhouse, whatever, then you got to talk about all these things, but in a very poignant way, you know, you're very po you're focusing them on one thing. I want to bring the pink day as, as a talking point in this presentation where it's, here's a great way to kickstart your, your, uh, by the way. So um, I have a new front line. Uh, she just, she just joined. Uh, let me just give you a quick case history. Um, she came to my pink day um, party and, with her daughter and turns out she herself may be allergic. We don't know. We haven't verified it yet to fish. She's allergic to fish, but she didn't want to try it on herself, but she wanted her daughter to try it. Her daughter wanted to try it. So they bought the pink collagen on, on, at the launch. That was one of the nine boxes. And um, within two weeks time, her daughter was already noticing effects and she and the mom was noticing weight loss and thicker hair those were the two things that she saw and and more energy that was the other thing um that resulted in them having a conversation with unbeknownst to me and then she reached out to me and said i'd like to join i think i'd like to join you can and that resulted in her registering this month as a new consultant, we had a quick conversation where I brought that PowerPoint up and I said, let me kind of give you the, the business of the business, sort of give you the 50,000 foot view so you, you understand where we're going or where we could go with this. And at the end of that call, I said, you know, um, we had that call and then a little bit of interaction. I said, you know, why don't we, why don't you host a pink day? Why don't we kickstart your business with a pink day? She thought, that's a great idea. We just landed the date today. So we now have a date um, in May to launch her her business for Pink Day. And I said, you know, you're going to need to um, serve that that uh, the collagen with with proper water. You know, I, I suggest you get the Nikan waterfall. So we have that. And she says, yeah, I've been thinking about that. And well, she went ahead and did that on the weekend. So so I'm looking at this as a. A set, an example of a beta test yeah. as a as a protocol to follow where a person goes from the collagen to setting up for a launch but now they know they need the water and the water is part of the whole experience of of hydration and so forth that works with the collagen so now what we have is a and she went ex, uh, senior so that purchase combined with the collagen she's now a senior so what just happened what just happened is a rank advancement. Um, it came from a customer becoming consultant, setting up to do a pink launch, is now a senior. Now, if we duplicate that and we start doing that generationally, we have our, our um, proof of concept. So the goal then would be she hosts a pink party. That's going to generate some sales. She might even go... Uh, rank advance out of that but the goal here is to create proof of concept generate some sales some customers on the collagen and then out of the experience of those customers which we know already within a couple of weeks that's going to start to happen there might be some conversation with a few who heard at the launch that there's an opportunity that in results in a few saying tell me more and perhaps we have the duplication taking place. Now, if that was happening across the board in Nikan land, just even on this call, we'd have 14 new consultants to deal with uh, minimally by the end of May, right? Well, if we got 14 new consultants at the end of May who don't know the business at all, how are they gonna learn about the business? How's that gonna happen? How are we going to orient them? That's when we would need a call to say, hey, let's get them on a call and let's orient them as to 
the big picture, similar call that I had with Marisa, where she got a 50,000 foot view and then it helped create some orientation, right? So maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's an orientation call for new consultants. Maybe it's once a month. That certainly works with my schedule. Does it work with, the, what is it? Does any of this inspire you? Because guys, if I'm just talking to myself, then then I'm not going to have 14 new people to talk to next month. <laughs> I like the idea of an orientation. I mean, it it's such a basic way for people to know they're going to learn about how to do something that's new to them. Yeah, just the word orientation right. is really good. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. that too. I like the word orientation too. You know, the big thing is starting them out right. I, I can't tell you the number of people that have signed on the dotted line and then, you know, I didn't start them out strong or the right way. And uh, so that would it'd be a big help. Okay, cool. So the orientation seems to be working great. Okay, yeah. good. So maybe then we have one and uh, let's see how that goes. So um, I'll let you guys know when it'll be in May, but keep that in mind. The idea here is to create a, a space for you to be able to present somebody who's new where they can get an elevated view of VCAN from a business perspective that's very specific, though, in terms of its call to action. So and, this, yeah, this person needs to say, well, what about the business or something to indicate, right? No, no. I mean, no. they don't know oh. what they don't know. I mean, they may say that, uh, but they don't know what they don't know. So this is where you invite them. Ah, to see it all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to know how old is Marissa's, was that her name? Marissa's daughter. 24. Okay. All right. I noticed some things at two weeks, but I'm way older than her. And so I'm thinking, you know, the body's smart. It takes it. And I know there's things that have changed for the positive, but I was just curious. That's wonderful. How, how many of you've noticed? Okay. So I have noticed this on me. I'm pinning myself. So I've noticed all of this around my eyes has gotten smooth uh -huh. none of those crevices and and the all of this is smoothened out all the way around my eyes here so um i used to have even a little bit of a bag bag under the eyes it, even that's clearing up it used to be much mm -hmm. more heavy than that so i'm seeing stuff happen now i've been using the the skincare forever and of course that's all i drink is the nikan water so I know that that in itself has had a yeah. huge impact on my skin compared to my contemporaries. I look 20 years younger than them. Mm -hmm. um, but this is new. <clears throat> this whole smoothing out around the eyes. That's mm -hmm. really cool. And I know this is a winner. This product is a winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, what I didn't realize until I did my, well, I was shocked when I saw myself not smiling, no makeup on. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was just, I don't want anyone to see this picture. And then I took a picture at five weeks recently and I looked at it and I thought, holy smokes, I had bags on my bags under my eyes. <laughs> and now I do and now I don't. But I had never even recognized that those bags were on the bags under my okay. eyes. So now what you just shared with me ought to be on your social media. Like you, you need to have, you can do a selfie. I mean, wait, you're, you're muted. I don't want to show them that picture, but can I just talk Hon about it? Honest to God. <laughs> well, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to just talk about it. I'm just going to say, <laughs> okay, guys, here's the, here's the, here's the story. Um, Cause I did, I did do a post um, two weeks into it. I think I said, I, I did a, a face post and i said if i look 10 years younger don't say i didn't tell you 
don't know if you guys saw my post. <laughs> <That's all laughs> well, well, don't be so, mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and I'm just gonna keep feeding on that because I think that that's it's just it's the truth. Yeah. Anyway, um, but that's what we need to do. We I find Niken people are in a category unto themselves. We we are so shy about uh, you know like putting it out there. We're, we're really somehow held back by this. I got you know what I got to do. I got to hire my daughter to come in and do a workshop with us because she'll get us. A, she'll get the that cobwebs out. She she just had a huge huge event in uh, in Guatemala and we spoke earlier today and it was lightning. So. I think I think we need to do that because we really have um, we have a great story and this story just keeps getting better. And honest to goodness, guys, even our business opportunity, do you realize with that we uh, accelerate bonus? Nobody in the industry is paying this kind of money. So we have a story that keeps getting better. But no matter how good it's get, it's gotten and how much better it's get, uh, gotten, especially with the pink college now, we're still not, we're still not on the top of the mountain shouting. And we really ought to be. So yeah. th this is not about Niken. This is about the character of the person that is attracted to Niken. And uh, we need to address that because um, we want in our business promoters. We want people who are better at this than we are. And so that's what you should put your hunting hat on. You know, let's hunt for some people who are better at promotion than we are. Because this story needs to get out and it's, we're not doing a very good job of it, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Nancy. Okay. I, I had told you and you had said, we just need to have some quick little snippets and put it on the, blah, blah, blah. okay, so I haven't done it yet. I said, I can do that, and I haven't done it. But I, what messes me up is I look on my phone, and it says, well, do you want to post this, or is this a reel, or is this a story? I don't know what that means, Okay, Ty. do you have a granddaughter? Yes. Okay, tell your granddaughter. Grandson. Okay, you got 20 bucks for them to help you put a story out. Oh, okay. Just do it. Because it's simple. It actually is. It's more intuitive than you think. And once you've done it, then you will own it. Okay. But what is the difference between a story and a reel? I look at people's a reel, reel. A reel is you've created a, like a little mini video that you've posted okay. on Instagram. A story, it kind of does it for you. It, oh, okay. it, it it posts it doesn't have to be a video it could be a video it could be a picture a story gets pushed okay. through your feed and stories are more visible you get about 100 or 200 views on a story whereas a post god knows whatever happens to that yeah so stories tend to get more exposure and uh -huh. so i i tend to do more of stories lately um, a reel is just something that you're putting more attention to, maybe crafting, maybe editing, whatever. You're going to post a reel. And yeah. that's just a little bit more uh, skill involved. But uh, a, okay. a story, simple enough. Yeah, Leo? Yes, just about the story. I do it every week. And I have a new contact with the story. I just send a joke or something, a funny joke. Funny joke. And each time I have a hundred people see my story, I just click on it and I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I begin the conversation. You know? Yeah. A That's story, you can see who saw your story. That's yeah. the other thing about uh -huh. story. And yes, the question was, do these things only last for 24 hours? Yes, both either reels or stories are only up for 24 hours. Okay. Okay. So, but they do tend to get the traction. That's where people sort of, so, but, but if you're following Leo's instruction, you see who saw your story and then you just communicate to them. Thanks for, yeah. thanks you, thank you. And, yeah. and that's how you can create conversation. Okay. I got a, I got a reaction though when I first started, I, I don't 
drink the collagen every day, but I've noticed that when I did, I, my energy level would tend to dip in the afternoons. Usually, it didn't do that. This stuff. So you're noticing more energy, Patrick. That's that is that, correct, yes, sir. Honestly, that has. There's three things that I think are the most common things I've heard so far: is the hair, the energy, and the weight loss. Those are the stories I'm hearing personally the most. Now, that's not all there is. I've heard fingernails. I've heard knee joints. Um, what else did I hear? Those were the ones that pretty much come to mind. That's about, there. I'm probably missing one or another, but the, the most common for me so far is the weight loss. The, um, the uh, and the, of course, the wrinkles. That's something that I'm seeing too. Uh, but just not as common as in the first two weeks is like the weight loss. All of a sudden they're noticing that and, and it's quick. And the, the hair, the I thickness of the hair. Problem. I don't have a wrinkle problem, but I do have an energy dip problem. And sometimes some of the diabetes medications I take tend to irritate my joints sometimes, but they don't, it doesn't last very long because I drink a lot of water. Okay. Let's see, a reel will remain in your feed and you can receive results and even months or years after posting. Ah, that's good to know. So a reel will remain in your feed. So if you go to someone's Instagram feed, yeah, that's right. You can see the history of the stuff that they've posted, including their reels. So they shows up shows up as a little arrow, like a little mini YouTube thing on their, on their um, I guess what they oh. call it, their profile page. Huh. So yeah, that's good. Which, um, like the TikTok thing that I did, the strength test, uh -huh. that that TikTok they call it a TikTok, but that would be the equivalent of a reel, and it's still there, and you can still go and see it, and I can still track how many people in all this time have actually seen it, and every time somebody sees it or likes it, and every day, every single day, I'm getting somebody like that video on TikTok. I don't know how it's still alive after six, seven, eight months now, but yeah, it still goes. Connie? Yes, better sleep. Better sleep. Heard that too. Mm -hmm. um, getting back to the orientation, how long, uh, say on a Saturday morning, would that be? Would it always it, uh, depends on questions. I like to okay. allocate about 90 minutes for that type of a conversation. Um, so I would say I would probably make it a 90 day or 90 day, a 90 minute. Um, okay. if, if I can shorten it, it's always theoretically, I can shorten it, but it depends on the, the knowledge of the person coming to the call. How much do I have to cover to pick up what they didn't get introduced to? So, uh, so if, if in the ideal world, you were all following the protocol that I follow. And so when they come to that call, they would have already had the why question answered. They would have already had an overview of Nick and the, the A Better Way presentation, soup to nuts. And so that would, that would have happened. So this conversation would just carry on. But sometimes what I find is when I get them to my call, they, they don't have the, pre, the pre, uh, prerequisite information. So I have to loop back and integrate that into the call so it takes more time when i have to do it that way okay thanks you're welcome mike we seem to have many strands going and i have followed your advice to join uh, many many groups on facebook although i'm going out in person soon because teach teaching in person is happening again for me so i'll be out more but um with groups, uh, everything you say and people's comments, and uh, it's all kept by Facebook. And so it makes it really easy to, if you if we find that you're developing a relationship with, with uh, different people in a given group, that then you can focus in on Messenger and so on and have new conversations with people because it, it's all relationship-based. If we don't have relationships with people we're we're just not gonna get anywhere i don't think well i, I tell you if you if you see some of the posts that i see on social media um they make me laugh so 
uh, there's these three or four or five women, same women, they just keep regurgitating their their pitch. Don't tell your upline. Don't tell your upline you're watching this and things like that. So that, that's like they're talking to network marketers. And um, if you're if you're told to make your list one more time, like, like they're they're bashing what is tried and true and proven because they want you to believe they have a better mousetrap. They know something you don't know. And then I ask myself this question. If you know something that I don't know that's working for you, why are you telling me? Because I'm the bait. I'm the one you're trying to recruit into your success story. In other words, your, your success story is telling people you're successful by recruiting those people you're telling you're successful. Do you understand? It's a, it's a, it's a game. It's a fraud. So I, I always look at those and I, and I think to myself, if what you were doing was so good, then you wouldn't have to tell me about it unless what you're telling me is what it is that you're doing. <laughs> it's, just, so it's like, I don't know who falls for that, but I certainly don't. I just laugh because there is no, um, there's no workaround to relationships. At the end of the day, if you want to build a business that has sustainability, that has character and depth of character, especially one like Nikan, where we talked about this, how special are Nikan people? There's a real depth of character of Nikan people. So you're not gonna you're not gonna find anybody who comes in that way lasting very long unless they've got depth. And if they've got depth, they probably wouldn't have come in that way. They come in because they relate to you, that they have a conversation, you have an interaction, you respect and, and see in each other something of value, something that's deeper than the surface level. You get past the surface level. And for that to happen, you have to have a conversation. They have to feel you. You have to feel them. And uh, there's no other way around this is except to communicate. And I think that that's why this business will continue to be relevant going forward, especially as all the other stuff gets hijacked by AI. All the stuff that we can't do in an interaction will get done by AI. But the stuff that requires an interaction, AI can't do. So the part that AI is going to do is it's going to create a further distance between the, the buyer and the seller. I don't think it's going to close the gap. I think it increases the gap because there's less and less trust. For instance, do commercials have more or less impact on you today? They probably have less. Less. Why? Because you don't trust them. Why don't you trust them? Well, you've been around long enough. You know that most of them are just hired guns. They're just, you know, nine out of 10 doctors recommend. Yeah, what, what doctors? You know, like... You know, voted number one, blah, blah, blah. Who's who's voting? Who, who's the number one based on what? Like, if you ask any intelligent question, you know, not to trust what you're hearing. It's just it's just all marketing. So what do you trust? You trust interpersonal. You, you, you trust that the connection with people that you can sense, you feel, sense, gauge. And that's where the trust comes from. AI can't create that. Have you ever seen some of the AI? You know, right now it's like it's, it's yeah. yeah. No, AI will not replace it because you know it's just a machine. There's there's a the human element is not there, and so the trust factor in real in commerce that we bring is irreplaceable. Therefore, the future of our business is secure. Therefore, it's worth building. Building a network is worth doing. Take the time, do it right, but do it. Don't wait. You don't have all day. Get out there, talk to people. And if, you know, maybe you spend the rest of this week just saying, hey, I'm looking for wellness enthusiasts. You know any? I'm looking for wellness seekers. You know any? I'm looking for wellness entrepreneurs. Do you know any? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? So let's make it easy. Let's tell them what we're looking for.
All right. Well, listen, last comment. We have 24 like hours that. left for the month. We have uh, 24 hours left in our 40% off our special um, on the air wellness. And, uh, I, and I think it's one of our finer products. I don't know about you, but um, I've got three in my bedroom. Um, I like fresh air. Anyway, yeah. um, I've got one right there in my office. So take advantage, let people know. It's not a bad idea to buy it, even if you're going to inventory it. This is one of those occasions where I would say, in Latin America, right now, I'm telling you, they would be buying two, three, four, five, and, and inventorying it. You know why? Because they're used to transactions. They're used to people interfacing and saying, hey, I've got one. I can give it to you for. Now, if you bought it at 40% off, you could still give it to somebody at 20% off and make a 20% profit plus your rebates from your silver ship. Sure. So it's not a bad idea to have this in inventory as a product you can sell because you're still going to profit um, even more than you would if it was sold just offline. So anyway, thought, food for thought. And if you got somebody breaking ranks, now that would be a good useful use of that purchase mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well then have a great month end everybody. Thanks for the commentary, the feedback on our orientation call. We'll sort that out for next month. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Hey. Right. Thanks, Mike. Good seeing good you. Good thoughts. All. Good good stuff. Thank you. Thank you.